Okay, well, welcome to episode five of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Pacor. I'm Trevor Page. Thanks for joining us again. We have a really good show lined yeah, up for you this week. A lot of action going on in the EV industry. All kinds <laughs> of stuff. You have no going idea. <laughs> the, the heat's hitting us in the summer, and it's also heating up in that industry. So. <laughs> Let's get right into some uh, quickly some overview in worldwide EV sales. There's a report that just came out uh, for Q1. Now this is worldwide sales. We've been talking about a lot of numbers recently with Tesla and other manufacturers for different segments, uh, but this is basically just uh, a report that's outlining that overall plug-in deliveries are up 59% wow, year over number, year. Yeah. Uh, with 66% of them being pure EVs or battery electric vehicles and 34% being plug-in hybrids. Uh, it really just, re I think, um, enforces the hockey stick uh, view that we've been talking about for about two years now since we started doing these shows. That, uh, you know, to get a 60% increase year over year, we, we're kind of hitting that swing. And things and not only up. that, but a shift from hybrids to pure EVs now. Correct. So that's correct. very encouraging. Yeah, it used to be the other way around. Yeah. Very, very dominant in the hybrid world in that section. And the fastest growing markets, can you guess what the, the number one market could be? Uh, well, the Scandinavian markets, I would bet. You're very close. Absolutely. <laughs> Finland's actually the fastest growing market. It's up 144% uh, year over year for Q1. Uh, surprisingly followed by South Korea and then Australia, the Netherlands, Spain and Canada makes the top five or six uh, and then China. No surprise about China, of course, uh, what they're doing. So you think Norway's not on the list? So you think you're yeah, getting some saturation in that I market? I think so. I think so. Hmm. I mean, well, they stopped for a bit. Remember when they they changed? I think a year or so ago, some of their VAT stuff, the incentives, and that dramatically halted or slowed down a lot of their EV sales. And then they only recently reenacted re that. Yeah, re so, it. Um, so I think that that's that's uh, part of that trend. But just good to see that things are happening. And you know, speaking of China. Uh, there was a tweet that you had sent me, some information from uh, Colin, uh, how do you pronounce that last name? McCarricker? McCarricker? McCarricker. Yeah. McCarricker, right. yeah. Sorry if we butchered it. But. Sorry, Colin, yeah. <laughs> we just wanted to talk about this. Do you want to, want to mention what he was talking about there in that tweet? Yeah, well, what we're seeing here is a switch. Uh, China has a new policy now for internal, specifically in Shenzhen, which is you know sort of the technology capital yep. of the world here. They have a deadline, May 1st, that all commercial light-duty trucks have to be EVs. Starting from July 1st, only EVs are allowed to ride to do ride hailing. By December 31st of this year, they want to replace all the remaining taxis with EVs, build 5,200 EV chargers for taxis, wow. and retire 20,000 diesel light trucks. Wow. These are big. city policies, mm -hmm. of course, uh, and it's going to really reshape the markets. This is this is very encouraging. Not to, just to mention that too, but of course, uh, Tesla or not Tesla, but China's just removed the import uh, tariffs on uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, on Teslas. So now we're seeing a huge demand uh, on Tesla. As a matter of fact, we just saw a tweet this morning that um, I think it was uh, one, of, one of the showrooms in China sold out of their complete allotments of Model Xs in 24 wow. hours. Wow. Yeah, I mean, again, we mentioned this on one of the previous shows that we don't really focus a lot on China because that could be a shows on its own just as far as what they're oh, doing yeah. from an electrification strategy. But this is really a groundbreaking policy for them to to start uh, doing that quantum shift in, in electric vehicle adoption. It's amazing. Um, and, you know, we know that other countries and, and other municipalities, you know, London has a, a, a tax if you drive in and this kind of stuff. So a lot of these cities and countries, look, some are looking to ban the sale of ice cars, you know, in the next 20, 30 years. So this this is this is happening folks a lot of policies are happening and i think china is going to probably set uh, set a foundation for well, a lot of places to follow they do you have to be you have to be cognizant of the fact that they have some pretty bad pollution over there so you know they're removing a lot of the red tape to make this stuff happen and i fear on on the other hand though too is that we could potentially see the same thing being repeated in other countries or other cities that if pollution gets so bad well it's like well now we need to make a change uh, that's not the right approach. It, mm -hmm. it should be proactive. Don't yep. let it get to the point where, you know, some of these Chinese uh, uh, cities got so polluted that now yep. they have to change their policies. And so, L.A., of course, has a problem, you know, and that's why California well, is leading in Well, yeah, and mm -hmm. remember, we used to have smog days in Toronto yep. until that's they true. shut down all the coal plants. That's of right. course, now our air is a lot better than it used to be. Yes, so, you know, some uh, jurisdictions are actually making the right changes in advance and not letting things get so bad. So it's encouraging to see this, but uh, it needs to continue. 
Absolutely. And of course, uh, we talked about the global and Q1 worldwide sales. Um, there's a, a report by Frost and Sullivan that predicts that 22% of passenger vehicles will be electric vehicles by 2025. And I know we've talked about some monumental dates like 2020 and 2025 that are coming up. That's a pretty significant number considering that it's around, you know, the one to 2% range today, if I'm not mistaken, in, in, in overall markets. Um, and that could be up to about 25 million vehicles that could be EVs by that time frame. And they're predicting cost parity by 2020, something we've been talking about for a while. Uh, I'm, I read some other analyst reports that, that push that cost parity out to 2025, but certainly within the next five to seven years, we should see cost parity. And uh, you know, that really, that's one of the roadblocks for EV adoption. And of course, lack of charging standardization and, and infrastructure is still a, a, uh, a potential roadblock for EV adoption. And uh, that is still being fleshed out as we speak. Yeah, five years is a long time in the car industry because that's mm -hmm. a, basically a, a product cycle. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, that most cars, whatever model they put on the market, is good for about five years. So we're talking, you know, one to two product cycles, and then we're already there with uh, with most of the EVs coming out on the market. That's right. And uh, I mean, just in the two years that we've been doing video shows, I mean, look how much has changed just in that, from, oh, yeah. especially from a product uh, availability perspective and what you can get out there. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some of those products, uh, some uh, updates on the Chevy Bolt, uh, B as in Bolt. The 2019 doesn't really get much updates for that model year. It's got really no range improvement. It's got some new paint colors and some smartphone interfaces and driver confidence. Two packages will be available on the LT trim in North America. Um, however, we talked about you know the Bolt being a great car and that there wasn't that long of a lineup. Well, apparently the lineup for Canada is a lot longer than we thought. We're hearing eight to 12 months now. Uh, to get a Chevy Bolt, and I think that's fairly, it's probably a little less in the U.S. I guess it depends which state. Oh, uh, oh yes. Be, yeah, the states mm -hmm. that have ZEV credits, yep. that's where they're getting mostly the yep. allotments, of course, because the manufacturer gets those incentives, not the buyer. So that's where the push is happening, Exactly. And, uh, of course, I think, uh, you know, it doesn't really, sales don't seem to be slowing down, even with the Bolt recall that's happened. There was an update that GM had put out that they extended that battery recall to include the model year uh, 2018 Bolts as well. It was originally just for the 2017 model year. Now, remember, it's not really classified as a safety recall. It's really a monitor of the, the uh, battery status uh, via OnStar and uh, that they, they are pro proactively contacting owners to have their battery service as soon as uh, diagnostic confirms that the batteries are suspect. So they run this diagnostic to see if it might have that failure problem. And if it does, then they ask you to come in and do a software update. Yeah, so this is a small mid-cycle refresh, really. Mm -hmm. It's not a redesign or anything. So. Correct. Uh, you know, Motor Trend came out with a long-term report. So they're one of the few organizations that have actually had a bolt for quite a while beyond, a, you know, just a typical consumer. And uh, it was a very positive report. They have over, they logged over 17,000 miles on the Chevy Bolt uh, in, in about 13 months and they said it's a solid hatchback that's versatile it's great for carrying people cargo and, and for doing trips including longer trips uh, they had some issues with freezing displays and power steering failed to boot one one uh, one uh, on some occasions um, but they took it in got a software update and uh, they've spent zero dollars on maintenance for that so again part of what we say for the ev adoption is when you get an ev your maintenance costs are much lower mm -hmm. because you're not really spending that much and uh, they like the one pedal driving similar to nissan's e-pedal uh the bolt has a one one pedal which we did two years ago at the car yep. show we experienced yeah i that. was impressed with it too. yeah and it yeah. was impressed at that time so uh, so they like that have you been on a bolt recently been on no I, I i have not i have not okay they're hard to find that's why <laughs> <laughs> oh zing <laughs> exactly and speaking of hard, hard to find you know we 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 haven't really spent a lot of time in the hyundai ionic we've seen it at the car shows um i took one for a test drive back in february i don't know if you've taken one. i now. did you yes did, at right? the yeah at the ev discovery center mm -hmm. there was a little meetup and uh, one of the owners showed up and uh yeah we went around the block i, I like the car it was nice it's a decent car yeah. the problem is you just can't get them <sighs> the uh we, we talked about this i think before that apparently now the the waiting line's even longer for these things because there's a global battery shortage that they have i don't know if that's specific, particular to hyundai because i'm not hearing it impact the other manufacturers the other manufacturers are claiming it's just more of a production ramp up I issue think, for I them. I think in so. this case it could have been that uh, Hyundai probably underestimated demand right. and they I weren't prepared with uh, supply in this case. So. Yep. 
Yep. So they've closed what they call sold orders for the 18 model year, and uh, they're going to fill you know what they can through available inventory for the Hyundai Ionic. And then they've opened uh, 2019 model year orders, pre-orders already for pre-sales, and customers can convert a 2018 order to a 2019 model year in keeping with the same pricing and incentives. Now, this is a U.S.-based article, so I'm not sure if that carries into Canada, mm. but I would assume that it would for North America. Um, you know, in retrospect, I think to your point, Trevor, they only sold about just over 5,500 uh, battery electric versions of the uh, Ionic in the in all of Q1. So that's not a lot by comparison uh, for what they could manufacture because mm-hmm. uh, they can pump out cars pretty fast. So uh, hopefully they'll be able to get their stuff together and get more cars out on the street. I would hope so. I would yeah. like to have a longer test drive in one. Yeah, day. exactly. Let's get into Tesla. There's been a lot of news about Tesla in the last couple of weeks since their last broadcast. Uh, f- of course, with a lot of focus being on the Model 3. Tesla announced a performance and dual motor versions of the Model 3 uh, and pricing tags could be up to about 86,000 loaded if I got that correct. Well, the the base price of the Model 3 performance in US dollars is 70 uh, 78,000 mm-hmm. if I remember okay. correctly. And of course that does not include autopilot. Um, it includes all wheel drive though, right? Yeah, and mm-hmm. that basically came from the fact that they're including a lot more options in the car. Now right. you get a choice of white or black interior. That's the right. white will show up eventually in the rest mm-hmm. of the cars. They're just which logistics. you predicted, by the way, like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> white interior. So well, the white interior is you. popular. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it also includes a carbon fiber spoiler, which yeah. is installed after delivery. It okay. comes with the twenty-inch uh, sport wheels now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the dual motor setup. Interestingly, the dual motor setup is a is a permanent magnet motor in the back, as usual but they've added an induction motor in the front, oh, okay. which is more similar to what they put in the S and the X. Okay. Um, so the performance is now at uh, 3.5 seconds official. Of wow. course, we all know that Tesla tends to sandbag these numbers. Yep. So I expect to see the 0 to 60 to be in the low threes. So let's just remember to put tested. that neck brace on before you floor it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, because of Tesla's pricing uh, policy in other countries, uh, specifically Canada, we don't have official numbers yet, mm-hmm. but based on calculations, this thing's going to come in at just under $102,000. Wow. So it's not a cheap car. Yeah. However, uh, you know, if you go look at the competition out there, if you look at a BMW M3 and you really load it up, you can easily you know, start kissing those numbers, especially in U.S. dollars. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for, for some people that want the speed, it's going to be a crazy fast little car. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what, what happens. Now, we that. don't expect any shipments of that car till later this year. Is that, uh, well, Tesla's year, taking so orders that? now. Yep. Production is supposed to start sometime in July. So okay. that probably means, uh, you know, at least... Q3. Probably, yeah, really, we're into Q3 for those deliveries. Well, yeah. into Q3, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, they have ramped up production. Uh, just uh, today, there was an announcement that they've hit 500 Model 3 units a day in current production. That's about 3,500 so 3, units 3, 5, uh, a week. 3,500 yeah. a week. So yeah. they're getting closer to that 5,000 uh, units per week number that Elon wants to hit. Um, and of course, that is important because if you're waiting for the standard range version, which is the $35,000 price, you know, base price, uh, what well, that was announced at the uh, reveal way back when um, that's not going to ship until about three to six months after tesla hits that 5k per week number um, so that you know if we do the math it could be as early as september or as late as december jan or into january of 2019 before we see the, the actual base and again our placeholder range. still says sometime yep. in early january or early 2019 early 2019 yeah, for yep. the thirty five thousand yeah. dollar of course canadian deliveries continue to ramp up mm-hmm. i mean uh, we're seeing daily now posts for people getting their cars and uh seeing more and more cars stockpiled in various locations around the gta here <laughs> uh are, is that uh, of course i haven't checked trevor but is that happening in the west coast as well and Quebec are we we're starting to get there? some reports um, mm-hmm. most of them are really my understanding is Tesla is trying to get as many into Ontario as possible because we have our provincial election coming we up do. on June 7th yeah so there's gonna all right folks so I'm here in the lovely town of Nottingham England uh, home of Robin Hood and his merry men well I'm here with a bunch of other merry men and a lady <laughs> uh, from an EV perspective uh, getting together and sharing stories and uh, learning ideas and things about the EV market so wanted to give an opportunity for everybody to introduce Introduce themselves, tell you a little bit about what they do and their channel. So we'll go from that. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, you start us up. Uh, so my channel is basically everything electric based. I mainly concentrate on the Renault Zoe, but I also cover other uh, electric cars. I work in the car industry, so I've got a little bit of background knowledge of buying and selling, and I try to educate people more on buying used EVs rather than new. Okay. Go ahead, sir. 
hi, um, our channel is James and Kate. We look at everything EV. Uh, if you want to know about uh, modern electric cars, uh, what they can do, what the limitations are, just come and have uh, come and have a look at our channel. And hopefully you'll enjoy it. Remember to like and subscribe, and follow us on Twitter, James, Kate, and Florence. There we go. All right. Hi, I'm John Chivers. Um, also on YouTube, I've owned a Leaf, Nissan Leaf, uh, 24 kilo hour for four years. It's our only family car. We managed absolutely fine with it for four years. And more recently, for the last couple of years, I've been riding a Zero DSR electric motorbike and um, done some great trips with that. So, uh, yeah. Well, means check out the YouTube channel. My name's Craig, I uh, run the Renault Zoe Owners Club in the UK and Europe, largest uh, EV owners club actually in Europe. And uh, we have a YouTube channel which helps all the members for any information. And our uh, club at the moment is uh, becoming quite a big hit. So uh, yeah, if you want to join and follow us, Renault Zoe Owners Club or RZOC. Go on. Okay. Hi, my name is James Chung and I am a Lemon Tea Leaf. Uh, that's my channel. I basically drive uh, Nissan Leaf up and down between the borders of Scotland and England, just messing around. So if you just want to have some fun, something light-hearted, come and join the show. And also I'm on a thing called Twitter, which I'm kind of new to. It's, I don't know, it's, it's a bizarre thing. Hi, I'm Aaron. My channel is uh, Aaron Russell on YouTube. Uh, I recently bought a 2018 Nissan Leaf. Um, it's my first EV, but it's also my first car, um, so kind of an interesting take on things. Um, I'm probably going to be rambling about what I get up to in the car over the next however many years I have it, uh, and it's probably all going to end up on YouTube. Uh, hopefully you'll join me for that journey. Um, yeah, so I'll see you on YouTube. All right, so please guys, uh, follow these other channels and learn a lot more about what's out there. As you know, we try to cover all areas of the globe. Uh, it's not just Canada, the US. Uh, there's other parts of the world that are worth something to look at and talk about. So please follow these people and uh, have fun. We'll see you on the next show. I hope you enjoyed that. And please uh, follow uh, my our YouTube compatriots in the UK. There's a lot of work that they do, like James and Kate and, uh, and various other folks out there that, that spend a lot of time and effort to uh, keep uh, people abreast of what's going on in the EV industry as a whole. So uh, check them out. And uh, of course, uh, everybody knows that I took delivery of my leaf about a week or so ago now. I've had it just over a week. And uh, I did a quick delivery day video of my leaf. So uh, here, here that is. And hope, hope you enjoy it. And here's my experience. Check it out. Well, welcome guys and gals. Thanks for joining me on my uh, special day today where I go and pick up my 2018 Nissan Leaf, brand new from the dealership. So I'd like for you guys to come along and experience a little bit with me. Won't be as exciting, I'm sure, as a Tesla Model 3, but at least you'll get to see a different perspective. Right, folks, one of the things I wanted to do is install a level two charger at home in anticipation of my new Leaf, which I'll be picking up shortly. Uh, funny thing is, is I actually received a Tesla wall charger several months ago and I was wondering, how can I utilize this wall charger even though I'm getting a leaf? Well, it turns out there's a device called the Tesla Tap, and we talked about this on a previous show, which will take the uh, end of the Tesla uh, wall mount uh, connector and uh, basically convert it to a J1772 plug, which is a level two charging for the Nissan Leaf and many other vehicles that are out there as well. So it'll allow me to charge my leaf quite easily. Um, this is wired to a 60 amp circuit, so I've got more than enough power and I've future proofed it as well in case I ever get another a battery electric vehicle, maybe a Tesla in the future, who knows, that's uh, certainly something I'm, I'm prepared to think about in the future. So I've got the Tesla wall charger and I can convert it and use it quite nicely. And it's uh, wired up to the fuse panel nice and safe. I had an inspection done, got my certificate, which means that I can qualify to get half my installation costs uh, that the electrician did back from the Ontario government while the program's still there. So I encourage you Ontarians, if you are, are looking to take delivery of your Model 3 very soon or other EVs that you're buying, Make sure to take advantage of the program and get yourself a level two charger for home. All right, just off the Nissan to go pick up the Leaf. My daughter's going to be helping with the filming of the delivery and my uncle Johnny's tagging along because ah. he's got nothing better to do today.
All right, folks, so well, I'm here uh, picking up my 2018 brand new Nissan Leaf, just waiting to do some paperwork, but thought I'd give you a quick tour. I won't go into too details because you've seen many videos, but here it is. I got the Jade Frost model, which is a color that's not very popular so far, at least here in Ontario. This is only the second one that they've sold this year in this color. I like it. It changes color, uh, colors in the different sunlight, and it looks pretty good. So uh, I think, as you know, I got the SL model, which is the fully loaded trim. Comes complete with the leather seats. Let me open that up. Comes complete with all the leather seats, the suede trim, the full tech package, and all the goodies there. So you can get a look at uh, what's going on with it. So I added the uh, silver kick plates to it as an option, which are at the bottom of the doors. And as well over here in the back, I added the uh, kick bumper protection plate for here because I figured I carry a lot of luggage for the time, so I'm going to need to protect that. And then one other option that I added was the interior cargo storage. I wanted to take advantage of a lot of the little stuff that I carry around and cables, so. This gives me that opportunity to do that, where you can compartmentalize things. Uh, it's got a deep trunk, so this will let you compartmentalize it. And when you fold the seats flat, it's a nice level floor. And uh, if I want to put my bike in there or something else like that, I have the option to do that. And this is removable as well. So, yeah, so I wanted to get just a couple things installed when I picked it up, but that's a leaf. So now I got to go in and do some paperwork and actually. Should they were asking me to show me show them the money, so I gotta do that now. <laughs> it unlocks the rest yeah, of the I kept pressing oh, it buddy. twice and it kept locking. All well, time. if yeah, if you press it again, depending on the settings you have, it, unlock, might, right. it might lock. So exactly. uh, at the other door, when you press the first time, it will unlock that door. Second press, and it unlocks the okay. rest of the car. That's the standard setting that's on the car right gotcha. now. Okay. Okay. Um, other than that, when you come inside, and I'll let you take a seat. Yep. Show you how the rest works. Don't mind start the car for us. Okay. So let's go through some of the settings, just make sure you're comfortable mm -hmm. before you take off. We're going to go ahead and set your headlights to auto. Yep. So nighttime they'll turn on, during the day they shut off, you don't have to worry about your lights. If you want your fog lights on, that's mm -hmm. the button right here. Okay, so just uh, flip this switch. Yep. Uh, steering wheel adjustment is down here, are mm -hmm. you comfortable with this? Yeah, I did it okay. a little earlier. Yep. Perfect. And your seat? Yeah, I did the seat a bit. And okay. I, then I'll figure it out as it goes. Excellent. This right here is your heated steering wheel in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Uh, click and it turns on. Yep. The next to it, the one with the steering, mm -hmm. that's your uh, your uh, lane assist. Mm -hmm. So that's the pro pilot on the car. Mm -hmm. You can have the cruise uh, control on without the steering assist. Okay. So if you want to shut it off, quick click so will that actually just engages the adaptive uh, cruise. Not the adaptive cruise. The adaptive cruise is on all yep. the time. Yeah. That button engages only the steering right. assist, which keeps you basically driving in between the lines. Right. Okay. What I mean is that when I when I engage or disengage it, I still can have the adaptive on. Cruise Correct. On. So I want to drive, but have a adapter. That's absolutely correct. Like if you're driving in the city, we yeah. in places where there's not enough lines yeah. that the car cannot read, right. but you still want to use the cruise, just shut that off okay. and you can still continue to use the cruise control. Yep. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and connect your phone? I did. <laughs> Thank you. You know me. <laughs> Good. Um, it's yep. nice to have someone familiar with this kind of stuff. Yep. Um, so that's perfect. Okay. Uh, emergency brake, you know how that engages and disengages? Yeah, you just push down. I think you have to have your foot on the brake. It will adjust your uh, range. So right mm -hmm. now you're seeing a range of 304 kilometers. Mm -hmm. The second you press it, you'll actually see that change. Mm -hmm. It will change drastically based, based on, on the temperature, the AC yep. on or off, and so on. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm just going to turn it down so you can actually mm -hmm. speak. Regular charge, um, you installed the charger at home I already? I did, yep. Perfect, so just plug in. Yep. Uh, you can control uh, timing from the inside of the car if you need yep. to set up uh, certain times where the car can charge, so it's off, off peak hours. Mm -hmm. That will be helpful. This here is your commercial charge. Uh, it's not available everywhere. Just be aware that if you're planning a long trip, make sure that you know where to go. Yep. Stay away from KSI. They're expensive, but unfortunately they're in the Tim Hortons. There you go. Um, this right here is camera. So you have back camera, you have front camera on the front, yep. and then the two side cameras. I'll show you how that works on the inside of the car. 
back seats to put them down. I assume you're ready on this can? Yep, it's just in the corner up here. Just, just release. Yep. And the organizer that we'll put in the back, this organizer here, mm -hmm. if you need to take it out, just undo this bolt right here, and it just... One bolt right. or two? Oh, one bolt. Just one, okay. just one bolt. Just uh, turn it yep. and take it right out. Okay. Sweet, yeah. Okay. And this is removable, by the way. Yeah. This is your portable, portable charger. Yep. It has the adapter as well for 240 and 110 okay. as well. So yep. just plug in the adapter. Please. Perfect. Yep. Uh, just keep in mind that if you're uh, doing the 240 yep. uh, with that, it's still not as fast as a designated station. Gotcha. Uh, it's not going to charge it as fast. Gone all, all through all the stuff with Eddie. He's explaining all the features and functions, like he's had to. And uh, now it's time to get the keys and, and get going home. So Eddie, it's been a pleasure, pleasure dealing with you and all the Nissan. Appreciate it very much. Just let me know. Certainly. So no right. And that's all right. Ooh, revolution starts, my friends. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's not as sexy as a Model 3 delivery, but, uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something there. Uh, and lastly, just on the UK uh, stance, I'm actually going back to the UK in early June to attend the fully charged live event, uh, June 9th and 10th at Silverstone Raceway, if I got that correct, in the UK. I'm meeting up with a lot of the folks you saw on that video, uh, and there are dozens of others that we're going to be meeting and going as a big gang and uh, kind of taking this place over. It should be an interesting event. We'll do some video from there and uh, report back on the findings. Yeah, make sure you follow our uh, our Twitter account here mm -hmm. for the show so because yep. Ken will be mostly tweeting from that. So Yeah, uh, yeah. definitely will be. So look forward to that, and a big shout-out to my UK uh, friends. So let's get in the mailbag. Oh, I love mailbag. What do we got this week? All right. Well, we have one mail uh, email that was sent in by Michael. Uh, Michael does not say where he's from. Um, I'm assuming it could be the U.S., but he was asking really about um, because Tesla has the old Numi plant that they purchased, and at one point that plant was capable of scaling up to 500,000 cars a year. He was asking about you know what is really Tesla producing currently right now on a weekly basis, and you know do we think that they're going to hit that kind of scale at some point from that plant? Well, on the Model Three front, we know that they're hitting uh, you know about 3,500 cars a week. On the mm -hmm. S and X combined, that's about 1,900 cars a week. Mm -hmm. So you know, on the S and X side, that's about 100,000 cars a year. And on the Model Three, you know, they should be reaching a couple hundred thousand cars somewhere in there. Yeah. Now, the Newbie plant has a long history, of course, dating back to the early 60s because uh, it was built by GM. Uh, now, I know the Elon's mentioned many times that they're capable of producing up to 500,000 cars, but uh, I, I think Toyota was producing at maximum of about 400,000 cars at, at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, okay. the, yes, the right. tooling is different in the factory mm -hmm. today as it was, you know, back in the mm -hmm. day. So yeah. um, now just to give you a little bit of perspective, because I know somebody else has asked this, you know, before, you know, what, how many cars is Tesla producing in their factory compared to others? So you'll give a, you know, a few examples like a Toyota here in, um, or I should say a Honda here in Alliston, which is close by. They yep. produce uh, just less than 400,000 cars a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a lot of manufacturing in Southern Ontario. So uh, Oakville, for example, is mm -hmm. probably around 300K cars per year. For Ford, yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, Tesla with their single factory, of course, because all the other manufacturers have a lot more factories than Tesla mm -hmm. does. They're in a good position, but because they're only making cars out of one factory, you know, it doesn't equate to a lot of percentage-wise, uh, you know, globally. Of course, that will change mm -hmm. when they announce, you know, the China factory and, and some of the other stuff that's coming down the pike. So it's encouraging. But, you know, it's still low volume. And Tesla's not made any bones about the fact that they can't do it all by themselves. Okay. Uh, you know, the electrification thing, it has to be a global effort. So. And it's a good question. Definitely shaping up to be a global effort. Mm -hmm, that's very for sure. Good. So thank you, Michael, for that. And don't forget, yeah. by the way, if you if you would like, feel free to uh, send in uh, your mailbag questions via you know an auto recording on your phone or your computer mm -hmm. and stuff, and we can play it live on the show if you'd like. So we definitely feel free will. to do that for sure. And that's really it for the show for uh, this uh, couple of week gap here. There's a lot of information that uh, we will continue to monitor and report on our next show. Of course, as Trevor said, you can email us at evrevolutionshow at gmail.com and follow our Twitter handle at EV Rev Show. And of course, for Model 3 information, Model 3 Owners Club. Yep. 
still growing and happening. There's a lot of stuff going on there. And uh, don't forget, please subscribe uh, to this uh, YouTube channels, to both YouTube channels. And uh, how can they do Patreon? Well, well uh, the easiest way right now to reach us out until we set up a new account is uh, patreon.com forward slash model three owners club mm-hmm. and all of the proceeds. And we really appreciate all yeah. of our supporters really keep the show going. So I uh, appreciate if you take a look at that. If you feel like pledging a little bit every month, it uh, goes a long ways. We really appreciate that. Yeah. I, you know, things that we do, we continue to upgrade our gear. I mean, some of the trips that we go on, we out of pocket these ourselves, mm-hmm. folks. So anything to, to help uh, uh, offset those costs is a big, Very appreciate big, uh, big consideration. We appreciate that. Well, that's it for this episode of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks for joining in. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.